welcome students. So, we are continuing with the process of the financial statements and uh, in my last lecture we were uh, preparing the uh, second statement that is called as income statement or the profit and loss account. So, we have taken some items here already as expenses, some uh, this side as incomes. Now, uh, we have some more uh, items here. If you look at this, maybe uh, one item is left that is sundry expenses. This is sundry expenses, we have to take this into account and similarly we have to take adjust this information also. Some information is left to be adjusted here. So, we will be adjusting this information also. So, I am uh, taking you to the next part means we are now starting from here from the top and if we need more space then we have to delete some more information. So, uh, in this case we will be using this space for our uh, say continuing the profit and loss account by removing the trading account. By removing the trading account we will have to continue here. So, now we were continuing on the upper part. So, next is to sundry expenses and sundry expenses are here uh, 3863, 3863 are the sundry expenses, 3863 sundry expenses we have to take now or there is there any other item left? Drawings no, income tax not yet then is the provisions uh, we will be talking about yes provision for the doubtful debts. Uh, this is the credit balance of provisions for the doubtful debts. It means these are the provisions for the previous years provisions were done for the doubtful debts for the previous year, but no doubtful debts have means no bad debts have taken place. So, it means that is why we have now the credit balance they are left unused. If there is we had made the provision uh, last year, but no sale turned as a bad debt. So, it means now we will have to return it back to the firm and add it as a income. So, we have the two ways to treat the provisions as we discussed earlier. Either you put it in the credit side, old provisions in the credit side and the new provisions here or we can adjust the new uh, old provisions here that first you put the new provisions less old provisions and then the balance amount can be taken here. So, either way we can do it there is no problem as such. So, we will be doing it like uh, whatever the total information is given to us. So, we are continuing with this that is your uh, sundry expenses and now we have to almost this information is fully exhausted is nothing left here, but this information uh, is left part of this information is left here. For example, the first item here is that uh, stock on trade we have taken, but the depreciation we have not taken. Now, we will have to calculate the depreciation for the different assets. Two depreciation, depreciation here is uh, buildings 5 percent. So, it means buildings, buildings 5 percent. So, what is the amount of 5 percent on the buildings? Uh, total buildings uh, was 11,200 plus uh, 11,000 uh, say this addition to building was 6720. So, this amount is 11,200 plus 6720. So, this total amount works out as 0297720. So, this is the total building during the year and you have to calculate the 5 percent of this. So, this works out as 896 for the buildings. Next thing is uh, the uh, asset is furniture. Yes, on the furniture the depreciation on the furniture is uh, 6 percent, 6 percent means uh, for amount of 800 rupees. There is 800 rupees and 6 percent is the depreciation. So, this works out as 48 rupees and then we have uh, next item is the motor vans. We have two amounts given here for calculating the depreciation on the motor van and these two uh, balances are motor vans first opening balance given here is 2400 rupees. So, this is uh, one amount you charge this depreciation on this for the whole of the year and the rate is 20 percent. So, it is 20 percent. So, this is 5 and this is uh, 4 plus uh, this. So, this is 
480 rupees uh, is coming out as uh, the depreciation for this. Uh, 5 fours are 20 and then is uh, 400 and then it is uh, 5, uh, it is the 40, 0. So, it is 480 is the one amount and then addition to motor van was 4160, but this addition was done on the 1st April 2011. It means there was no addition in the motor man's balance in the first 3 months. There is no addition in the first 3 months. It means only this part of the motor van has been used for 9 months. So, you have to charge the depreciation on this particular amount for the 1 full year and on this remaining this addition only for 9 months. So, this amount is 4160 into 20 and if it is 100, so it is 5. So, it is 8, 1, uh, 3 and then it is uh, 2, 832 and 832 is to be uh, converted for the 9 months. So, it means it is this way. So, if you solve this, so this works out as 480 plus some am amount. So, the total depreciation for this motor van depreciation works out as 1104. So, this is the for the whole of the year on 2400 and for 2160 only for at the rate of 20 percent only for 9 months. So, initially when you uh, calculated for the full year that was 432 rupees, but when we converted that to uh, <coughs> this part, so it means uh, this works out as uh, uh, how much? This is uh, uh, 2 uh, and then this is 8 and then this is multiplied by 3. So, total amount works, uh, works out as 480 plus this one, this is 1104 this is the total depreciation. So, you see the total balance of the depreciation is how much now? This is uh, uh, this is uh, 8 and then this is 4, then it is uh, uh, 0 and it is 2, 2048. So, the, the amount, the balance of the depreciation is 2048 is the depreciation balance which we have calculated on the three important assets. Now, we talk about the uh, next part. So, we have taken this closing stock, we have adjusted depreciation, we have adjusted income tax we will take later on. Now, the accountancy charges are payable 400 rupees, two accountancy charges, two accountancy charges and they are 400 rupees. So, one effect will come here and the second effect will come in the balance sheet. So, I am removing this further information also, we are continuing with the same statement. So, we will be, you have noted it down, so we will be removing it and then we will add that remaining information here and calculate the net profit after tax. So, we have taken the accountancy charges accountancy charges payable done, light and fans we have already adjusted, telephone we have already adjusted, amount paid in advance for insurance done, motor expenses we have taken into account, income tax account to be written off, okay. write off further bad debts of 888, make provisions at the rate of 5 percent, discount of 2 percent on debtors and creditors are to be anticipated. So, the total amount of this uh, we have to take into account. So, uh, when we talk about the total income tax amount, we will have to take the total amount of the uh, that is given to us uh, here. Income tax payable is 5200 rupees and here it is written income tax account to be written off means we will have to write it off. So, we will write it off and we will do it. So, it means we will take here now the two bad debts, two bad debts, uh, bad debts write off further bad debts rupees 888. So, total amount of the bad debts is 888 which has really become the bad debts and in this make provisions for the doubtful debts at the uh, rate of 5 percent. So, it means what is the total amount of sundry debtors? the total amount of sundry debtors here, look at this, these are the sundry debtors, 
seven triple eight. So it is uh, seven triple eight. So out of seven triple eight, the eight triple eight has already become the bad debts. For sure, these sales will never be recovered. Clear. Now on the remaining seven thousand rupees, so it means out of seven triple eight, we have not to recover. Triple eight, so it means now the balance of the credit sales to be recovered as a sundry debtors are seven thousands, right? Seven thousands are with us, but here it says that make provision for doubtful debts at the rate of five percent. So we'll have to make a provision of on this also five percent more may not come. So five into hundred, so it is three fifty more may not come. So this is three fifty minus three fifty. So how much is left with us? It is now. Six six five zero. So credit says expected to be recovered are six six five zero. So it means uh, two provision for doubtful debts. Provision for doubtful debts is uh, how much? Three hundred and fifty. So total amount expected to be the bad debt is going to be eight. Uh, it is three one, and it is one two three eight. This amount is going to be one two three eight, and out of this we'll have to subtract the uh, opening uh, balance of the uh, bad debt provisions nine fifty one. So as I told you, either you take nine fifty one this side, or you subtract from this side. So sometimes what happens? We write it in this side. When the old provisions are more and the new provisions are less, so to avoid a negative figure here, we put that balance of the previous year this side. But if you look at the current year's figure, current year figure is triple eight plus three fifty. This is one two three eight, and the old provisions are existing provisions are nine fifty one, which is less than this. So if we can put it on the debit side itself, so less provisions. Say uh, you can call it as uh, provisions. On one one two thousand eleven or opening provisions we can write. So this is nine fifty one. So this has to be subtracted because we had made the provisions like this here one two three eight we made for this year. Previous year also we had the made provision of nine fifty one, but these credit sales at that time did turn out to be the bad debts. We recovered those credit sales. No bad debts were there, so it has to be returned back to the firm and. Those provisions made in the previous year have to be taken back in this year. So previous years, you can call it as expected loss, will be now the income for the current year because it is not provided, so it should be taken into account here. So this is how much? This is seven, then this is eight, and then this is two eighty-seven. This is two eighty-seven is the amount of the bad debts. So final bad debts for this year is. We want you to make the total provisions for one, two, three, eight. Out of that, triple eight has already become the bad debt. Three fifty more are expected to be bad debts. So total amount expected to be bad debt this year is three two, uh, one two three eight. But previous out of the previous year provisions, uh, worth sales worth rupees nine fifty one. They were not turned as a bad debt. We recovered those sales, so we will have to return it back to the firm in this year. So total, we wanted to make it one, two, three year this year, but previous year we have made excess provisions nine fifty one. We are returning it back. So fresh provisions we are making for this year is only two eighty seven. After that, next item is five uh, percent discount on. Debtors two percent and discount on creditors creditors is expected to be two percent. Now after this, further discount on two discount on debtors, two discount on debtors. That is two percent discount on debtors is two percent. So two percent on which amount? This amount six six five zero. Total was seven triple eight. Triple eight has become the bad debt. We were left with the seven thousand. Five percent more is expected to be bad debt, so it is three fifty. We have taken more. Now the balance in the credit sales to be collected is left with six six five zero. So of this, we are anticipating that we have to give further two percent more discount to the buyers of goods from this company on credit 
to collect this remaining amount of 6650. So, we will have to further subtract 2 percent of out of this. So, if you subtract this, this works out as this much and if you calculate this, this is 1, then this is uh, uh, 3 and this is 3. So, 133 rupees more discount is expected to be given to the buyers of the credit sales. So, we will have to lose 133 more rupees. So, it is 133 discount is expected to be given. So, but this is discount to be given on the debtors and at the same time this firm is expecting the discount from the creditors also. They are expecting the discount from the as they are giving expecting to give the discount to debtors it is a loss. At the same time they are expecting that this firm's creditors also will give some discount to this firm. So, that will be gain it is a loss and here it will be the gain. So, how much is the amount of sundry creditors 20,000 and uh, 2 percent of that is 400. So, by uh, discount by discount by discount from creditors discount from creditors is going to be 400 rupees this discount is going to be 400 rupees. So, I think uh, I guess we have adjusted almost the total information till now given to us and uh, here if we uh, talk about the. So, let us check once again we have not to take these balances because they are all uh, assets. So, nothing to be done in the profit and loss account we have taken the motor expenses this as well as this sundry debtors no sales done purchases done salaries done discount received done discount received we have already taken rent and rates done addition to buildings nowhere to be taken but only depreciation has to be taken so we have taken repairs to building we have taken rent received we have taken lights and fans rent received we have taken is we have taken lights and fans we have taken this as well as this information also telephone we have taken insurance we have taken 672 and plus this information bank balance no is a asset cash in hand asset sundry creditors is a liability will go to the balance sheet. Similarly, addition to the motor van uh, we have to we have only taken the depreciation on this and then we will be taking the total amount then the sundry expenses we have already taken 3863 3, drawings we will take in the balance sheet income tax now we will have to adjust and provision for uh, doubtful debts previous years balance we have already adjusted we have already taken that into account clear. So, uh, it means let us check this information also we have taken the uh, uh, stock 54,000 already done depreciation on building 5 percent done furniture 6 percent done motor bands 20 percent done income tax we will have to adjust. Now, accounting charges we have taken light and fan we have adjusted telephone amount due 80, 80 is done amount paid in advance for insurance is also taken into account. Similarly, uh, your motor expenses are also taken into account income tax will have to write off write off further bad debts triple eight we have done <coughs> make provisions for doubtful debts at the rate of 5 percent we have done discount of 2 percent on debtors and on the creditors we have already done. Now, let us calculate the net profit before tax to net profit NPBT we call it as NPBT net profit before tax. So, if you total up the this side this is going to be uh, something like this uh, say uh, 8 and then it is going to be 5 and 9 14 1 5 4 uh, 9 and 16 and 20 this is 0 4 8 and then it is going to be uh, 7 uh, 13 14 and 2 16 1 and it is 8. So, it is 96,048 is the total of this side. So, it means you have to write here 96,96048 is the total of the credit side it means credit side seems to be bigger than the debit side. So, we are going to end up with the profit 
and the first we have to calculate the profit before tax and then the profit after tax. So, net, net profit before tax is going to be how much? If you take that 9648 and if you total up all these expenses of this side, so we are going to end up with the net profit before tax is 70085. This is going to be 70085 is the net profit before tax, right. Now, tax amount to uh, uh, income tax, income tax the tax on the income of the firm to income tax. So, income tax is how much? Here it is advanced tax paid is 800 rupees and income tax payable furthermore is 5600 rupees. So, how much is the total income tax to be paid? That is 800 plus 5200s that is 6000 rupees. So, you have to subtract that 6000 rupees to income tax and this is 6000 rupees. So, now finally, two net profit after tax, two net profit after tax will be uh, 64085. 64085. This is a net profit after tax. So, we have already adjusted. So, it means the profit is calculated in two steps. First, we have calculated the net profit before tax, that is a simple of total of this side minus all expenses in the profit and loss accounts debit side. Then we were given information about the income tax, total income tax due is 6000, uh, out of that 800 are paid in advance and 5200 is due to be paid. So, total this works out as which is already given to us, we are not given a percentage, we are given the total absolute amount. So, we have taken this absolute amount that is the 6000 rupees. So, profit after tax is uh, 6485 means uh, 64,085 rupees is the net profit after tax. So, since it is a, a private limited company as I told you in the beginning that it is a private limited company. So, no dividend will be uh, paid, uh, uh, is supposed to be paid to anybody. So, this entire amount has to be adjusted in the balance sheet to be taken to the balance sheet and has to be added in the capital. So, after this, after preparing the profit and loss account, uh, we will have to now go further with for preparing the balance sheet. And here we have taken the 4 items, gross profit, discount received that is again 6416, rent received is the indirect income as I discussed in my previous lectures, then is the discount from the creditors as we are giving the discount to the debtors, this firm is giving to give uh, the discount to the people, to the buyers who have bought from this firm on credit. So, as they are giving the discount here, this firm is getting discount from the, their suppliers from whom they have bought. They are expecting to get the discount at the rate of 2 percent. So, 133 discount they are giving and 400 discount they are expected to get. So, almost there is a no loss as such because sundry creditors are more, sundry creditors are here say 20,000s. So, in the 20,000s we are getting 2 percent discount it means 400 rupees discount is there. So, total income on the credit side of the profit and loss account is gross profit then it is the discount received is again indirect income gain, rent is again indirect income not from the main business and discount is the from the main business and that is from the suppliers. We are going to pay less to the suppliers, we are going to pay the to the suppliers now is the 19,600 rupees. So, this is the income side, this is expense side, this is the net profit before tax, then this is the income tax we have taken and then it is the net profit after tax 64085 we have already calculated and this will be now added in the balance sheet. Now, here before we start moving to prepare the balance sheet for this particular case, uh, you must be remembering that uh, uh, when we prepare the balance sheet, when we prepare the balance sheet or start preparing the balance sheet, first item in the balance sheet comes up as capital, share capital or capital. Share capital is in the public limited companies and in case of private limited companies, partnership firms and sole proprietors, we call it as only capital. But no capital is given here, no capital is given here. If you, if you search for the capital, 
look at this motor expenses, sundry data, sales, purchases, salaries, discount received, rent rates, addition to building, repair to building, rent received, lights, then it is the telephone, insurance, bank balance, all this. If you, if you look at for this total information, you will find that no capital is here. So, is it possible that the business is running without capital? It cannot be possible that you have no capital, still we are doing the business. If you have no capital, from where then these balances have come? Say we have bank balance of 8000, then land is 20,000, buildings 11,200, then is the 800 is the furniture and then it is the motor van of the 24,000. So, it means in this case, when we are talking about the capital part in the balance sheet, we will have to now try to find out that capital means that though we are not given state by the amount here, but these all items are purchased from the capital. So, in the balance sheet, first item that will come as a capital will be taken as a capital by us will be here something like say total of these 5 assets. Bank balance 8000, land 20000, 28000, buildings uh, uh, this is uh, 28, 38, 39200, then it is uh, 40,000, this is 42,400. So, the total capital that we will be taking in the balance sheet, sheet will be 42,400 uh, and then the other things will be adjusted, other things will be taken care of, other things will be adjusted in the balance sheet. So, uh, this is the capital, though it is not directly given here, but we will have to take it from here that these balances are means first we invested the funds in the business and those funds were converted into the assets. So, on the asset side these assets will come, 5 assets will come and on the liability side the first item we will start uh, the preparing balance sheet bid will be the capital. So, capital will be some of these 5 that is 42,400. So, when we will prepare the balance sheet we will take that into account and the balance sheet I will be preparing in my next part of discussion in the next lecture. Thank you very much.